Welcome back to the 18th video of this course uh, on quantum processing. Uh, last time we talked about uh, the matrix elements that govern our uh, dynamics in a optical lattice uh, for uh, the band structure of uh, block waves, so for the ground state uh, of our venue basis in terms of block waves, and we saw the matrix elements. Uh, let, let me just remind you that the, those matrix elements for J and U, J for the tunneling, U for the on-site interaction, and J is just the uh, hopping term from one side I to another side or the other side J, and in between you have the matrix uh, element. So you have uh, you have the Hamiltonian for this matrix element, which is nothing else than kinetic energy for uh, and the potential energy for the system here. Uh, let me remind you that. Uh, uh, if you have also for the on-site interaction, if you have two particles and two, those two particles have their vanier base, have vanier functions uh, uh, squared, so you have two particles that are looking like this for uh, this on-site interaction, and J is the coupling constant, which is proportional to the uh, uh, the A, uh, which is the scattering length, actually. So if you have one particle here. Uh, it has nothing for U. So there is no U for one particle because the particles does not inter interact uh, per se. Let us promote this uh, vanier basis and make kind of expansion uh, uh, in the vanier uh, basis. We will actually transform or expand the field operator in the vanier basis uh, for these kind of localized uh, Gaussian wave functions for the uh, vanier functions. Here I just if I have the uh, Ipsi, I will just uh, expand that for whole of the I, uh, let's say uh, this uh, uh, X is actually X minus R, Xi, and you would apply just kind of operator, uh, annihilation operator, okay, and you would just recover this wave function X. I just promote that to the level that I can uh, express it like this. Actually, this factor of 2 is coming from if you write, for example, if you know something like the Fox state, you know, just wave function, you expand this for for, uh, annihilate, for creation operator, you would have this uh, square root of n, and here the uh, square root of 2 squared just means 2 for these uh, wave functions, uh, for these four wave functions, four field operators here. Uh, we will do prom another promotion, the promotion here that I can express this wave function uh, psi by a creation operator, and here for uh, destruction operator so I would just uh, express ho the whole uh, term is here for the kinetic energy and the potential energy or the on-site interaction and the tunneling matrix elements for uh, uh, hopping in terms of operators in terms of pairs of uh, annihilation and creation operators here so the whole Hamiltonian if I write down the Hamiltonian which is interesting uh, it will look like this so this is the Hamiltonian for the whole process here okay if you look at the Hamiltonian you find that it has the matrix elements for the kinetic energy hopping from one side to the other it's nothing else and you destroy from J and you create that I uh, at the lattice sides here at the optical lattice for the other term so it is also expectation values for I and J for the other terms uh, for the on-site interaction, if you just uh, do some kind of, actually if you have the uh, field uh, operators, if you have the uh, commutator relation, you can find that the number operator for the this creation and then the, for the destruction, then the creation, is just a dagger here, so a dagger to a dagger a, for example, and this is the number operator for the these kinds of, of operators. Just to do some kind of uh, right commutation and intercommutation relations, you can find that this is can be written like this. The whole term can be written like this, and you have u over 2 uh, for the interaction. Actually, you can map from here. If you have one particle, it means you don't have this term, right? So now we have the tunneling term. You have the on-site interaction, and this is another term for the chemical potential. So this is the whole Hamiltonian. It's very simple Hamiltonian, and we call it bose hubbard Hamiltonian because uh, it's actually uh, related to bosons, right? You have also the fermi hubbard Hamiltonian. That's just uh, very similar, but you, for the uh, fermions, just keeping the idea of the uh, impenetrable fermions that you cannot occupy the same site, and you just see some similar terms for the fermi hubbard model if you go to check it out. 
But the case here that we are presenting is for Bose Harbor model. The Bose Harbor model is responsible is responsible for the uh, two important cases here. You have two limiting cases for this uh, kind of dynamics. The dynamics is governed by the uh, interaction term and the matrix element tunneling term here. If you have the interaction term which is much larger than than uh, J, that means that you are actually uh, uh, trapped. If you, you have trapped particles. In this case, uh, we call this case if you have the interaction much larger than the kinetic energy it means that we are in a mode what we call mod insulator this is what we call mod insulator and i will explain it now for uh for you uh, lo uh, less than j so if j is a tunneling term here a hopping term is much larger than the interaction the unsigned interaction it means that you have what we call our really bose einstein condensate which is a superfluid case so you have complete tunneling, hopping, tunneling from one side to the other uh, here, but for the other it's small insulator transition. This is the, the case that was studied by, or was actually the, the model in optical lattices, was proposed by Ignacio Sarak, Peter Zoller in a very nice paper in 1998 uh, to study those bose hubbard uh, Hamiltonian parameters using this kind of, of uh, ideas here. Actually, for the coherence term, for the, or the coherence superfluid case is very coherent uh, phase. You can find that this is uh, looking like this. As actually, this is a coherent uh, uh, field, and the coherence. And remember that you can, you have this kind of uh, relation between the number part, the, the particle uh, variance or the fluctuations in number of particles and the phase. And also, you have this kind of uncertainty here. This uncertainty of the phase and of the number here for the case of the uh, the Poissonian distribution for a coherent state remember this is what we write in quantum optics this is the coherent state okay for the coherent state which is representative for the superfluid case you have the Poissonian distribution and you can find if you see the pictures I, I would recommend that you check them out you can see the superfluid case you have uh, if you do if you see the pictures you can find that they have uh, well localized uh, functions and those functions means that you have uh, uh, extremely uncertainty of the number number of particles number of particles is huge that that's for, that's why you see the uh, fluctuation in phase on the various in phase uh, dramatically decreases that's why you can see this poissonian distribution and this poissonian distribution you would remember the poissonian distribution for a coherent state mm -hmm. okay here is nothing else than this term for exponential and whole for n over the factorial n. This is for the Poissonian distribution in terms of coherent state. So this is a superfluid case. For the multi insulator case here, actually the coherence vanishes. No coherence, no phase coherence here. But here for the other superfluid, we see long range phase coherence. For the Fox state representation, of the multi insulator, you just have this uh, simple one state, one simple Fox state, and remember this Fox state is given by this relation. You just uh, create uh, particles on the vacuum. Let's apply this uh, concept, and you see that this is the multi insulator uh, case uh, where actually you have delta n, delta l larger than or equal to one. This is not one half, sorry, this is just one here. So this relation uh, for remote insulator transition for multi, uh, for multi insulator phase that you have dramatic increase of the the, the fluct uh, of the phase fluctuation so you have large phase fluctuation and you have just simple uh, uh, decrease in the uh, number of particle variance or number of particle fluctuation here fluctuation in number of particle you can write down the wave function for the multi insulator transition uh, to to, so to, from superfluid to multi insulator transition, you can write down the wave function for each phase here. Uh, this phase is just the sum, you just have sum. This is a BEC, this is the Bose Einstein condensate, and here for the multi insulator transition. You just have product sum, and this product sum uh, is just nothing else than field, uh, uh, field operators, and those operators are acting on the vacuum state. Just the difference between the superfluid case and the multi insulator case. Is just for the sum and the product sum that you have here. So, uh, for this uh, interesting uh, uh, video, I uh, introduced the idea of the superfluid case and the multi-insulator case. Uh, the experiment was done by the groups uh, in Munich. 
uh, by uh, Ted Hensch. Uh, you have also uh, the paper by Emanuel Bloch. And the, Emanuel Bloch actually was one of the first uh, people to recall the idea of quantum simulation using uh, optical lattices and ultra cool atoms and optical lattices. And you go from BEC state to molten insulator state by uh, just lowering and playing with the optical lattice until you trap particles uh, here for the molten insulator case. And you see this is kind of the uh, image that you can see, you check it out. And BEC, you just have extremely large increase in the number of particle fluctuation, huge number of, uh, of particle fluctuation. But for the molten insulator case, you have the coherence vanishing because of the uh, large uncertainty or large fluctuation in the, uh, uh, the phase that we can uncover. Uh, let me uh, say something uh, uh, eventually that if you would like to see uh, the time of flight, I would recommend you go uh, in the papers by Emanuel Bloch and you will see the ex ballistic expansion for the Bose Einstein condensation and also for the Malt Insulator case, you will see uh, nice images uh, experimentally. This was the beginning of really optical lattices uh, uh, simulators for condensed matter problem. Here you simulate Bose Harbor model. This is very interesting, and remember that for uh, atoms and optical lattices, atoms are neutral. But for condensed matter, you go for the solid state problem, you find that electrons are charged particles, and you would suffer greatly for uh, simulating the Coulomb interaction. But for neutral particles interacting, hopping with each other, if you understand the social convention for those particles, you can simulate uh, many, many phenomena happening in the uh, limits of the condensed matter. Thanks a lot for this uh, video and watching this video and see you in the next time.